Hello everyone, and welcome to Introduction to R Part 3, Atomic Data Types. When you work with data in R, they'll generally be stored as one of several basic atomic data types. So this lesson, we're just going to go through those and describe what they are. And there are three different numeric data types, so we'll go into those first. The numeric data type double, sometimes known as float, are just numbers that also have optionally a decimal portion to them. So when you're typing numbers directly into, say, the R console or in your code, they are default going to be doubles. So we'll use this type of function here to check the type of the different values we're working with. When we run this, we can see that the type of 1 and the type of negative 10.5, these are both considered doubles. So any number that we type in here is going to come out as a double by default. There are some special double values. You can see here inf and minus inf are both indicative of negative infinity and positive infinity. When we run type of, you can see those are both doubles as well. Um, there is a special numeric character called nan or not a number that can occur when you're doing certain calculations that doesn't have any real answer to it, such as a classic example would be dividing by zero. So here you see we're dividing zero by zero, and then under here we're checking the type of not a number. When we run those, zero divided by zero throws a not a number value, but the type of it is a double. So it's still considered a double, even though it's kind of like a missing or a value that doesn't make any sense. So the second data type for numbers is integer. An integer is just a whole numbered value that has no decimal component to it. And you can convert doubles into integer with the as.integer function here. So when we do that and check the type, it should be integer. We can see here that it is. And you can convert a double back to an integer with the as.numeric function. So down here we have type of as.numeric as.integer1. So we're converting the 1 to integer, but then we're converting it back with this function. So the end result is that it's a double again. Now you can do operations with both doubles and integers at the same time. It will just convert the result into a double. So here we're adding the integer 20 to 10.1. And you can see the result is 30.1, which is a double. There is a third numeric data type called complex, which lets you do some operations with complex numbers. Um, I'm not going to really go into that in this video because it's not super important that you're able to work with complex numbers. You'll almost, you're most likely never actually see this when you work with R, but it's good to know that it does exist if you do see it or you happen to need it. So if you're interested in learning more about that, you can click the link to the kernel page in the video description below, and you can read this section on the kernel page. We'll skip ahead of that one. So the next atomic data type is the logical. Now, logical is just what's known as a Boolean value or a true-false value. In R, when you're working with logicals, you write them out by writing out true or false in all capital letters. So in R, this big capital true is indicative of the true logical, and the false is the false logical. So if we run the types, you can see they're logicals. You can also use only the first letter if you would like. So those also evaluate to true and false logicals. Um, I think it's generally better to actually write out the whole thing so you explicitly know what you're working with. And with logical values, you can do various logical operations, like greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, etc. So for instance, if we say 20 greater than 20, the result of this is a logical, which is false, because it's not bigger than 20, it's exactly equal to it. But greater than or equal to 20 is true. So when we run that, those are the results. Now to check equality in R, you use the double equals sign. So here we're saying 10 is equal to 10. That is true. Here we're saying true is equal to false. That is false. So when we run that, we get those results. 
Now to check inequality, you use an exclamation point followed by an equal sign. So right here we're saying this string here, cat, is not equal to the string dog. Here we're saying true is not equal to false. Both of those statements are true. So when we run that, the output shows true for both of them. Now there's also a negation, which is just essentially saying not. And to do the negation, you put an exclamation point in front of a logical statement. So here we're saying not false. So negating false creates true, which we can see there. Now you can also do various logical operations with like and and or and other things in logic. Um, to do and, you use an ampersand like this. And to do a logical or, you use this vertical bar. So here we're saying two is greater than one, and that is true. And eight is greater than nine. That is false. And with an and, all the statements have to be true for it to throw true. So this first one is actually false. But with the or, only one thing needs to be true for the whole or to be true. And since we know that one is true, the or will throw true. So as we can see, there's false for the and statement, but true for the or statement. Now, similar to your math expressions, you can use parentheses to enforce order of operations with ands and ors. So that can be a good thing to keep in mind if you're trying to do some complicated logical expressions. Um, you can convert numbers into logicals with this as.logical. Um, zero is considered false and evaluates to false, and one evaluates to true. Any other number that you try to convert will also be turned into true. So if we run these as.logical conversions, the one gets turned into true, the zero gets turned into false, the minus 10 also gets turned into true. Now, if you try to turn logicals back into numerics, trues are always going to turn into 1, and falses always turn into 0. So if we run this as that numeric on true and false, we get a 1 and a 0. That can be a pretty useful thing to know, because if you're, say, wanting to add up everything in a column that is true and or you want to even take a proportion, all you need to do to count all the trues in a column that's true and false is simply add the column because all the trues turn into ones when you do that operation and all the falses are treated as zeros. So sums on logical, logical data actually is essentially the same as getting counts. So that can be a quick way to do something useful with those. Now the final atomic data type that we are going to be considering is the character. The character is just a string of text values, sometimes known as strings in other programming languages. And to indicate a character value, you just surround the text string by quote, quote marks. So here we have the string cat because the CAT is surrounded by quote marks and Similarly, this one here is actually not a double because it's within quotations. So this is the string or character value one. It is not the double one. So when we run type of on these, you'll see that both of them are characters. And then you can convert the characters to numeric using the as that numeric function. So if we do that on the string version of 12, it will turn it into the double value of 12. Can see there and you can convert numbers back to character using the as dot character function so we can convert this double version of 12 to the string or character version by running as that character we'll check the type you can see its character and note that it when it evaluates down here it has quote quote marks around it when it was the numeric version it did not so even in the output, it'll show quotes around it indicating that it's a character. And in practice, character strings can be indicative of lots of different things. It could be like a tweet. It could just be like gender. 
there's any number of different things characters could represent. So it's good to know how to work with them. And we'll have a whole lesson later on about how to work with character data. So that covers the five numer or five atomic data types that we're going to look into in this lesson. Um, there is another rare data type that I think is called binary or something. It's like, long story short, you don't really need to know what it is or to work with it, at least for what we're going to do in our guide. But we would like to know how to take values that we're using and store them and use them later. So in the next lesson, we're going to get into how to do that by learning about variables and how to assign them. So look forward to that, guys.